I'm Jenny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. I, I know, I know. Today I want to look at the things that I cannot recommend that you should do during this season of The Witch that is October, November. So this is my top five things that I won't do during this season of magic because the consequences can be pretty dire. Now, firstly, it is the season of the witch, isn't it? It's October, it's cold, it's wet. As you can probably hear at the moment, it is raining quite hard outside my window. And you might not be able to hear my words as the rain thunders onto my uninsulated roof. So I don't think there's anything dripping at the moment. You never know with an old barn. This is why I was slightly in the straits about not being able to get a new camera, which I still haven't got, but I'm getting there. And it's because we've had to pay for quite a lot of the roof to keep us warm and dry. And roofs just appear to be extraordinarily expensive. However, let's get on to the video. The magical practices I would not use during the month of the witch. The month of the witch, you can call it a single date of Halloween or Samhain, or you can look at it as a season. I tend to look at it myself as a season. And the reason why I look at it as a season is because there is an energy to this time of year. And this energy, it's got a lot of currents to it, it's got a lot of flow to it, and it can create a lot of havoc and mischief in your life if you tap into this worldly energy and misguide it. So, number one, I would not skimp on my protection at this time of year. And in fact, you'll see, I have the wonderful pentacle behind me, symbolizing that the protection you can use. I often persuade my clients to put warding around their house. If you set it up right, this spell will stop anything dreadful getting into your house. Actually, it does have some consequences because um, I set up a spell because I didn't want to be burgled. And so I added this to my ward and I had to take this anti-burglary spell down because uh, nobody could find my house, including all delivery drivers, the postman who'd been here every single day, suddenly stopped bringing us letters and parcels. All, all friends who came to visit suddenly forgot where we lived and kept on getting lost and we couldn't find us. And so once I realised that the anti-burglary spell had essentially lost our house from sight from everybody, I had to take it down again. The magic works in mysterious ways. And so for everyone's sake, I'm going to insist that you protect yourself. And the best way to do that is to cast a circle of protection. When we have our coven meetings, we do this every single coven meeting. We cast a circle using these words. Let nothing that may cause me harm be allowed within the circle. This will protect you from all those bad jujus and slightly demonic aspects of magic. And it's really important. So should you be doing any magic, Cast yourself a circle. So once you cast yourself a circle, though, you have to make sure that you aren't carrying into that circle your own particular bad jujus. So my point number two is to cleanse, not just with a wash, although a ritual salt bath is particularly fabulous, but also use some incense. The smoke from incense, its energy can wiggle its way and move around and get into those nooks and crannies and push things out. It's a bit like smoking something out of its lair. So if you use incense, then this will protect you from the bad jujus. Now, how would you do this? So first of all, you just need to choose your incense. And my favorite is, I've got this rather lovely Indian rose at the moment. So I'm going to use this one. Although I do like a bit of white sage and frankincense, you know, just me. The important thing is to use the incense flavour that you like at that particular time, because that will align itself with your energy at that particular time. Well, how do you do this? Well, simply, well, light your incense. So get, make sure it's nice and smoky. I always start by taking it round my head just to get rid of the basics this will just smoke out the main issues if you've got any. Stick it round your head, take it across the front, take it across the back. Do the whole of your back and the whole of your chest area. I like to do my hands, keep those clean nicely. I like to do my feet, especially the soles of my feet, because this will ensure that my grounding is energised properly. 
number three. What would I avoid during the season of the witch? And this might surprise you a lot, but mm, unless you have done a good load of protection and understand a lot about dark forces and occult magic, I would not use a mirror in my magic. Now, this particular mirror was sent to me by the wonderful Rachel, hi Rachel, who was worried about it because she said she thought there was something within it and she was unutterably right. There was a very nasty demon in it. And this was attached and trapped within this mirror. And when I took the demon out, it broke, not the mirror itself, although that's very common, but the surround and it broke. And so I had to put it all back together. Let that said to me that the demon had left this particular mirror. In my videos, I have been talking about the spell that you do at midnight on Halloween, where you brush your hair, eat an apple and look in the mirror and you will see your long term partner over your left shoulder within the mirror. This spell is exactly what I'm talking about. And I do also mention in these videos that you might see the devil and it can be quite scary. Mirrors are portals and you don't know where they're going, where they end up or what happens within them. Unless you're very highly qualified and have looked into this subject, do not use mirrors in your magic at this particular time. My next don't at this time of year is don't do spells that involve somebody else's energy. If you use spells for somebody else's energy, these can be good spells as well as bad. For example, you might be doing spells to help someone pass their exams, or you might be doing a spell to help somebody uh, pass their driving test. Actually, I've been asked to do that spell so many times and I refuse every single time. I think to pass your driving test, it's very important that you uh, study and have lessons and be good at driving before you're allowed on the roads. Cars are terrible things, kill lots of people. So. The thing about doing these sorts of spells that are for another person's good is that you are changing their pathway without their explicit consent. Now, it's up to them to change their pathway, not you. And so it's really important for you to step back and let other people make their own choices and therefore their own mistakes in this world. If you don't, you don't know the consequences of changing their pathway for them in the distant future. For example, if I did a spell for my child to pass their driving test and then they were insured to go out on the British roads and drive around and then they had a crash because they passed a driving test through magic and not through actual work, that, that is the consequences of my actions. Don't do it at this time of year. For example, doing a Ouija board. Don't do those. Just don't. I promise you nothing good will come of it. You are not speaking to great granny Anne or, you know, Uncle Percy. You're just not. You are speaking to something that is impersonating that spirit. And I can guarantee you won't be speaking with a spirit. You'll be speaking with something else. Don't do it. Finally, the change in seasons makes the magical energy of the world unbelievably chaotic. It's just all over the place. You know, you hear there everywhere. So one of the things I will not be doing is making spells for the future, because unless I want my world tipped upside down, which maybe you do, spells for the future are going to um, not work out well how you envisage them to do so because of the chaotic nature of the energy that you're using. So don't do that. Or unless you want that. I mean, it's quite fun to have a bit of chaos in your life occasionally, isn't it? I and mean, I have to say, I've been through the last about 10 years of my life has been more chaotic than you can possibly imagine. Okay, so I don't wish to go through any more chaos. I'm quite happy with it not being chaotic and being quite happy. So these five things, as I always say, are just guidelines. Don't necessarily think uh, I know the best because you might feel actually I really don't agree with what Ginny is saying here. I think that she's wrong on this particular point because of XYZ and if that's the case you go for it. This is your pathway and your life. Magic is incredibly personal. However this is a good guideline to live for if you don't understand the full depth of what you're doing. If you are not a super adept at magical practice yet. And that includes people who've been practicing for several years. You know, this is uh, 
serious stuff that we work with here. I would love to know what you won't do during this season because everybody is different and I'm interested to hear your particular brand of I don't think this is good. We all learn from each other. So if you can tell me, I would be forever grateful. Otherwise, don't forget to go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall. If you want to join the coven, learn to become a witch, get witchcraft lessons. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in my next one. <laughs>